Hi everybody. Welcome back to Barbara's Den. I'm back with more coffee talk. And this coffee talk, um, I wanted to do a review on Pan, I think it's Pan Laborist. Never heard of it, didn't know what it was, but it, but for some reason I want to watch these um, mystical Harry Potter type movies. I couldn't find any Harry Potter movies on Netflix, so I'm assuming they must be on Hulu or somewhere else. So, I saw Pan Laborist, and I said, oh, okay, that's kind of a mis mysterious type show. So, I watched it, and I finished watching it. And it was very good. Uh, my mind is into watching these mystical movies. Something that we grew up not watching. And according to religion, it's bad, evil, whatever. But you know, now I'm um, tapping into my spiritual side. Religion, I got the religion part. But I'm tapping into my spiritual side. And I had to look up the word pan, which basically means, I guess, the pan to put the bread in. Or the pan stand for bread. So I needed to get a deeper understanding of it. So I look at laborers. And laborers is um, the definition is not coming to the front of my mind at the moment. But anyway, as I began to watch um, Laborist, after I did my research, I had to cut it off and do some research to get some kind of understanding of what Pan what Pan Laborist was. Once I did that, Googled that and did that, then I went back to finish watching it. And it's, it's very interesting. The understanding I got from it was Laborist is a path or a maze where um, you were born, where I think um, this girl, this is this princess, she wanted to experience the other side. So she went to the other side, I guess from the mystical world into earth. So she wanted to know what earth was about. So she was born on earth, but she was a princess. So now, as she is being born on as she's being born on Earth, which that goes into all of us, we come from um from the stars or from from the source, and we are born here, and we have a mission, and I understand the mission is to remember who we are because when we come here, we have no memory. Of our, of our, where we came from, and why we're here. Therefore, we have to go through this, I guess this is what they call this laborious maze, path, to, to get, to get, which is a path, I understand, a path into our self. It's a, the laborious is a path. To our, into our inner self to know who we are and where we came from. So when she, so with the girl in the movie, it's named Oph Ophelia. So Ophelia, she born and then the um the little what do you call it? The, what is this little creature? Is this little thing look like her? Look like a grasshopper or something. And when she showed, she believed in fairies. So when she showed him the fairy in the book, then he formed his body into a little green fairy. And then his goal was to get her to follow him into the maze. And as she got into the maze, um, the, um, what's the thing now, uh,
the labels. Uh, what was his name? The Fawn, F-A-U-N. So as she see the Fawn, the Fawn um, let her know that she's the princess and her name is Moana. So that's who she was. And he said, and I can prove it to you. Like she said, why would I believe you? She said, he says, I can prove it to you. Uh, it's on your shoulder. Now the place she went into had a, um, a crescent moon. Um, on that window. So, so when she got but he gave her a book and told her to read the book when she's alone. Well, she opened the book up, there was no, there was just blank pages. So I mean, I understood that to mean she gonna write the book. Or the book, the, the book is gonna form from her memories. That she don't even know is there. So anyway, she goes back home with the book. And her mama make her a beautiful dress, and she goes to get the bath or whatever. And as she gets her bath, she looks on her shoulder, and sure enough, it was it, it was the breast mark on her shoulder, and it was a um, crescent moon with little hearts on it, I think. So she so she's like, I'm a princess. So now she's enlightened. She know for sure she's a princess because he told her the birth mark the mark will be on her shoulder and it was so now she knows she's a princess now and she know her name is mom so when she tried to tell it to her mother her mother didn't really want to hear it because she said because her mother wanted her to be the um laborers or whatever and her, to be the little but she said she wasn't but her daughter was so her mother didn't really believe you know how it is you must be telling you see things they want you to be quiet. Don't know what you're talking about. Don't speak on that again. So that's so that's how her mother was. But anyway, she um she went on her little journey um where she would go see the phone, and the phone would tell her she had three things she had to do. The first thing she had to do was to go um the whole first she had three things she had to do. To get back to the king and the queen where she came from. Because she left the king and queen and then she was born on earth and remember nothing. So, now for her to go back, she had to go through that path. She had to go within herself and find her way back to the, um, the king and the queen where she sat down beside her father. So... The first thing she had to do, she had to go in this tree where this big old frog was in the tree eating bugs. And because that big frog was there, the tree couldn't thrive. So she had to go into the tree and put those stones in, put, put those stones into the frog's mouth and, and get the key. So she ended up tricking the frog and got the stones into the frog in the big frog's mouth. And all of the guts came out of the frog. The yellow guts would look like little bugs in the way he was eating. And then he kind of shrank down, you know, how like um, a melted, like the witch melted. So he melted down all his guts there. And the key was laying right there. So she reached in there and got the key. From out of the yellow guts, she was all dirty and muddy from crawling into this tree. So she crawls her way back out. She, she had her dress sitting on the mama made sitting on that um, tree. But the rain come and muddy it up. So she got her clothes, she put it back on, and she went back home with the key. Her mother's pretty upset because she just made a complete ruined mess of the dress. So she went in and she bathed and whatever. And her mother was mm, kind of upset with her. But anyway, she bathed up and got nice and clean. And then she then when she got rested for bed, till her mother was pregnant with her little brother at the time. And the little brother gonna come into play in, in the end. But anyway, um anyway, um so she got the key and went back to the phone and this little fairy would take her there. And so she would go back to the um, phone. And she gave the fawn a key. And the fawn was very happy that she got the key. He said, now you got two more things you have to do. The next thing she have to do 
she had to don't eat anything. She had to open a door and go get um she had, she had to go get something. I don't remember what it was. But she had to go there and do something and she had to be back before the sand goes out. Because they had an hourglass before the last sand drops. So she went there and she did what she needed to do. But there was this person with no eyes, but the eyes are sitting on the table. So, as she did what she needed to do, he told her, don't eat nothing. So she went, and she would just, had to eat these grapes. It was a big buffet, table buffet of all kind of fruit and food. And she was just distracted by these grapes. So, there was three, there was three um, fairies went with her. And she tried, she keep fanning the fairy away, trying to tell her not to eat the grapes. She fanned him away, and she was determined to eat that grape. So she ate one of the grapes, and then she turned around, and he fanned her away, trying to stop her. Three of them, just trying to stop her not eat the grape, because she's not listening to what Fawn told her. So she fought the, um, um, the fairies off, and she ate the second grape. And as she ate the second grape, the, um, the thing sitting there with no eyes and whatever, he picked he um picked his hands up and picked the eyes up off the table and, and his hands are where eyes go. So he picked each eye and put it put it in his hands where the slit was for the eyes to go in. And then he put his hands hands over his face so he could see her, see what's going on. And so he went out to her. She see that and he grabbed two of the fairies and ate two of the fairies. I guess for the two great she ate and then he was gonna eat her. So she took off running, and the other fairy took off running. And she, by the time she got there, this last thing ran out in the door that she opened with the chalk. Yeah, there's a chalk. She had to open the door. So she draw like a little chalk. So when she went back, the door, um, the door closed. So she got, so she had, so he was coming to get her. So she got the chalk, and she climbed up the ladder and draw because she couldn't draw another one in the wall so she drew one in the ceiling and as she got the door open in the ceiling then she crawled up the ceiling and um whatever the thing was was trying to grab her so he could eat her so she managed to get up there in time and one of the fairies and she kept the fairy in i guess in a little box that the fairy came in but um so she got out in time so when she went back to take the box with the fairy in it and give it to the phone. The fairy came out of the box and, and whispered in his ear telling what she did. He was like, why did you eat the grapes? You were supposed to eat the grapes. So he said, she drawn, she this and that. He said, she will be young, she will be just like, a, just like everybody else. She will grow old and die just like everybody else. She will not get back to um, the king and the queen. She would not get her, um, she would not, she would not be allowed to go back to, to be the princess and the king and the queen. But he was highly upset with her. My thing is this. She said, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. It's not a mistake. And they told you not to eat it. And you insist on eating it. Hitting the little fairies. Eating it anyway. And then two of them got eaten by the, um, whoever the, the creature was. And he probably was some other kind of little phone, I don't know, but with no skin. But anyway, so he was upset with her. She made a mistake, so he left. So now she's upset. <laughs> he tell her she would not be the princess. She would not go back because she missed off to him because she did not listen. <coughs> so now the part where her mother's being pregnant with the baby, with her little brother, where the mother was sickly. They said that, um... He said the mother was sickly, but the mother was the, um, she was the princess, but because she didn't do what she was supposed to do, she came here, she got sick and weakened, you know, and then she died, but, and then, and then, and then this, this captain killed her husband and took his watch and whatever, and then he got her pregnant because he needed a, he wanted a son, so he got his son, but think about it, she was so sick. 
that she needed to be bedridden the whole time. So the fawn told her, gave her some ginger root, which is so it looked like a real live body <laughs> moving around like a baby. But she was supposed to pour some milk in it and put the ginger root in it and put it on the bed and that would heal her. So now when the doctor comes in, she the doctor said, I, he said she's getting better, but he don't know why. So he gave her, give her some medicine to drink. She said she didn't need it because she's feeling better. So as she's feeling better, he didn't give her a drink. So she's laying there, she's getting better and better. So she will go on it. So since she's getting better and everything, she's going to have a healthy baby. Um, she will go under the bed to make sure, you know, check on the, um, the, the ginger root in the milk. And, and this time while she was under the bed checking, uh, the stepdad, which is the captain, um, he see he dragged on the bed, tell me, what are you doing under the bed? Put up under the bed. And then he went under the bed to see what she was doing. And he pulled the little pan out with the milk in it and the, and the little ginger in it. He said, what's this? And she said it was magic. It was making the mother better. So he was a crazy person. So the mother, so he said, deal with the girl. So the mother um, jumped on her case. You don't listen. You always doing this. You always doing that. But she said, but mother, it's what's making you better. She said, it's magic. It's making you better. So it's what's healing you. She didn't want to hear that. So she takes the little ginger root, which is alive, and threw it in the fire. And as she threw the little ginger in the fire, the ginger's being burnt up in the fire. And then all of a sudden, boom, the baby started coming out. So they're running in the midwife, running around. She's losing a whole lot of blood. And the man told her from the beginning, if anything happens, save my son. You save my son. So there was no way she going to live. So the thing was to make sure the baby lived. And that's what they did. They made sure that baby lived. So the mother ended up dying. And it's all because she didn't want to listen. She didn't want to hear it. So the princess came. See, so the princess came to her daughter because her daughter listened. She said she heard all of that because her mama wanted her to be that. But she, but it's not her. It was her. Because in the beginning, as you listen to it, it was saying, she came here and I didn't really understand what she did. But anyway, she ended up getting sick. She ended up going and she ended up getting sick and getting weak and then she died. But her daughter... So her daughter was the one that became the princess after that. So the daughter listened because she went out there and she found the um the little um fairy. It was some rock that was on the ground and she picked the rock up and she knew that the rock fit this little part in the stone where the like her eye was missing and that's when the um the little fairy came out and followed her all the way to um England, Spain, whatever they went. But anyway, so all of that ended up happening. So after she was upset, stressed, her mama died, you know, when the baby's here and whatever. So the phone came back to talk to her. She said, oh, she's, you know, she's sad and whatever. But he said she had another chance. She said she, oh, what she had to do was go get her little brother and bring the little brother to him. So as she going to the big chaos, go through all of that, she, um, the, um, she ended up, you know, taking the baby and running, trying to get through there. And, and, the, um, the captain, the stepdad of the baby's father, he chased after her. He chased after her and followed her into where the phone was. But when he got there, she was giving the baby to the phone. He couldn't see the phone, but she could see the phone. So he looking at her just talking his face. So... And she said they had to take a little bit of it. He said, just a little bit. She did not want to sacrifice the innocent baby. Um, so she could get back to the king and the queen and get back to her family as the princess that she was. She would be the princess. So she didn't want to give it to him. So she turned around and gave him the baby. 
and he took the gun out and shot her for taking his son. Then as he walks outside, these particular people, a whole, a whole, I guess they call them the rebels, and he knew he was going to die. So, anyway, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story, but they were rebels, and he was just killing people, killing rebels like, I mean, just like people life don't matter. It was a very violent, cruel person. But um, but anyway, he shot her. He killed her. And while she was lying there dead, she was bleeding. And she bled, in, and her blood from her hand was dripping into the well where the, um, where the laborist was. And this is that little well she walked down there where the, um, the laborist was. So... And she lied there dying, the girl that, you know, that that, that helped her and delivered the, delivered the baby. And the father gave the baby to the girl, I mean, to the lady, that who he tried to kill. She ended up cutting his mouth open and all kind of thing. And he gave her the baby. And she said he wanted to make sure the baby knew what time the father died. She said, how would, how would he know that? So he cracked his watch at the exact time that he died. So the child would know the exact time he died. So that's what he did. Now and then when she went in, and she went into the place, she saw the little girl lying there dying. And she just said that the little girl was still alive. And then all of you know these little um, white, like pixie dust lights came up all around her. And her body lit up. And she was in um, this space, and she and she got up and walked, and her hands weren't bleeding, and she looked down, she looked nice and whatever, and she walked forward, and she seen the king on his throne sitting there, and the queen on her throne sitting there, and she looking at them like, and the, and the Labrys was there, and the fairy was there, and standing beside the queen, and. The mother or the king went on told her that the king told her, You sacrifice your life for your brother. So he said, That was good enough. That was right. That was good. So therefore, we, um, therefore, the mother told her, Now take your, um, now take your throne beside your father. See, first, I, I, I was elated smiling all over but then back on earth it, you'll say to them she died but if you look at it she didn't die she left that body she left earth and went back to her kingdom where she came from she was a princess she had a whole kingdom she was in, in, and as she got there they say she she was princess by her father and her mother for centuries, centuries. So she got back. She left to come to Earth. Then I guess she had to come through. She had to come through a whole different body. And then she had to wake up, remember who she is, go within herself, and take that um, laborer's path back to where she came from. Cause she remembered that she was a princess, so, so that's how that went. So and and I and I kind of relate that to a lot of us here. We all come here through the womb of my mother, mothers, and we come here in a body, but when we leave, we don't die, because her body was left here, but she lived on. And found the king and the queen and then she got her um thrown back beside her father so i thought that was very exciting so as you see what i have up here now stardust i'm about to watch the movie called stardust as soon as i finish this but i want to go ahead and do this video on um on pan laborers because uh, i thought it was a very exciting movie so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time with more Coffee Talk.
Bye.